Lesson 6 David, the Shepherd King After the death of Moses, a soldier named Joshua led the people of Israel into the Promised Land. God was with them and helped them drive out their enemies. The Lord God gave to the people of Israel all the land He had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This land was divided between the twelve tribes of Israel. Many years later, the people of Israel asked for a king. God gave them a tall man named Saul to rule over them. While Saul was king, the Philistines gathered their armies together for war. The Philistines were the Israelites' neighbors who had settled along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Saul's soldiers were lined up and ready to fight. The Philistines were on one hill, and the Israelites were on another hill. The valley of Elah was between these two hills. Goliath Challenges the Israelite Soldiers The Philistines had a champion fighter named Goliath, who was about three meters, over nine feet, tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of armor. This armor was made of bronze and weighed 56 kilograms, 125 pounds. Goliath also wore bronze protectors on his legs and had a bronze javelin tied to his back. The wooden part of his spear was long and very heavy. The spear's blade weighed nearly 7 kilograms, 15 pounds. Goliath's helper walked in front of him carrying the giant's shield. Goliath came out and shouted to the Israelite soldiers. He said, Why are all of your soldiers lined up ready for battle? Choose one man and send him to fight me. If that man kills me, the Philistines will become your slaves. But if I kill your man, you will become our slaves. Today, I stand and make fun of the army of Israel. Let me have one of your men to fight. Saul and the Israelite soldiers heard what Goliath said, and they were very afraid. David visits the battlefield. David was the son of Jesse. Jesse was from a family in Bethlehem. Jesse had eight sons. The three oldest sons went with Saul to war. David the youngest son, took care of his father's sheep at Bethlehem. One day Jesse said to his son David, Take this basket of cooked grain and these ten loaves of bread to your brothers in the camp. Also take these ten pieces of cheese for the officer who commands your brother's group of one thousand soldiers. See how your brothers are doing, and bring back something to show me your brothers are all right. Early in the morning, David had another shepherd take care of the sheep, while he took food and left, as Jesse had told him to do. David went to the camp. Just as he arrived, the soldiers were going out to their battle positions and began shouting their war cry. The Israelites and the Philistines were lined up and ready for battle. David left the food with the man who kept supplies, and ran to the place where the soldiers were. David found his brothers and talked with them. David offers to fight Goliath. At that time, the Philistine champion fighter came out from the Philistine army. Goliath shouted things against Israel as usual. The Israelite soldiers saw Goliath and ran away. They were all afraid of him. One of the Israelite men said, did you see that fellow? Look at him. Whoever kills him will get rich. King Saul will give him a lot of money. Saul will also let his daughter marry the man who kills Goliath. David asked the man standing near him, What did he say? What is the reward for killing the Philistine and taking away the shame from Israel? Who is this Goliath, anyway? He is nothing but a Philistine. Why does he think he can speak against the army of the living God? 
Some men heard David talking. They told Saul about David. Saul ordered the men to bring David to him. David said to Saul, Don't let anyone be discouraged. I am your servant. I will go fight this Philistine. Saul commissions David to fight Goliath. Saul answered, You can't go out there and fight against this Philistine. You're not even a soldier. Goliath has been fighting in wars since he was a boy. But David said to Saul, There were times when I was taking care of my father's sheep, that wild animals came to take some sheep from the flock. Once there was a lion, and another time a bear. I chased that wild animal, attacked it, and took the sheep from its mouth. If it attacked me, I caught it by its fur, fought it, and killed it. I kill both a lion and a bear like that, and I will kill that foreigner Goliath the same way. Goliath will die because he made fun of the army of the living God. The Lord save me from the lion and the bear, and the Lord will save me from this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul put his own armor on David. David put on the sword and tried to walk around. He tried to wear Saul's armor, but he was not used to all those heavy things. David said, I can't fight in these things. I'm not used to them. So David took them all off. David took his walking stick in his hand and went to find five smooth stones from the stream. He put the stones in his shepherd's bag and held his sling in his hand. Then he went out to meet the Philistine. David Kills Goliath The Philistine giant slowly walked toward David. Goliath looked at David and laughed. He saw that David was not a soldier. David was only a handsome teenager. Goliath said to David, What is that stick for? Did you come to chase me away like a dog? Then Goliath used the names of his Philistine gods to say curses on David. Goliath said, Come here, and I'll feed your body to the birds and wild animals. David said to Goliath, You come to me using a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of God, all-powerful, the God of the armies of Israel. You have said bad things about him. Today the Lord will let me defeat you. Today I will cut off your head and feed your body to the birds and wild animals. Then all the world will know that there is a God in Israel. Goliath came near to attack David, and David ran to meet him. David took out a stone from his bag, put it in his sling, and swung it around. The stone flew from the sling and hit Goliath right between the eyes. The stone sank deep into his head, and Goliath fell to the ground, face down. So David defeated the Philistine with only a sling and one stone. He hit Goliath and killed him. David didn't have a sword, so he ran and stood beside the Philistine. Then David took Goliath's own sword out of its sheath and used the sword to cut off his head. When the other Philistines saw their hero was dead, they turned and ran. The soldiers of Israel shouted and started chasing them. They killed many of the Philistines. Their bodies were scattered along the road, all the way to Gath and Ekron, Philistine cities near the seashore. David becomes a popular military leader. After that, Saul sent David to fight in many battles. David was very successful, so Saul put him in charge of the soldiers. This pleased everyone, even Saul's officers. David would go out to fight against the Philistines. On the way home, after the battles, women in every town in Israel would come out to meet him. They sang and danced for joy 
as they played their tambourines and lyres. They sang, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed tens of thousands. David became very popular throughout Israel. David becomes king of Israel. Many years later, after King Saul had died in battle, David was crowned king of Israel. David made some bad mistakes, but when he realized that he was wrong, he always came back to God and said he was sorry. He tried to obey the commands of God, and he followed God with all his heart. Future generations would look back upon David as the greatest king in the history of Israel. David was a giant military leader, an outstanding king, a famous poet, and a skilled musician. David was also a spiritual leader. He had a very close relationship with God and was led by the Spirit of God to write beautiful songs. These songs, which are now a part of the Bible, are called Psalms. David's Psalms point to the coming king. David was led by the Spirit of God to write many things about the coming shepherd king. For example, we learn from David's Psalms that the coming king would be 1. A descendant of David, 2. The son of God, and 3. Rejected by men, 4. His hands and feet would be pierced, 5. His bones would not be broken. 6. He would be raised from death before his body could decay. 7. He would go back to heaven. And 8. He would sit on a throne at God's right side until all his enemies are conquered. David wrote in the 22nd Psalm about the death of the coming king. He wrote, My God, my God, why have you left me? I feel like a worm, less than human. People insult me and look down on me. Everyone who looks at me makes fun of me. They shake their heads and stick out their tongues at me. They say, Call to the Lord for help. Maybe He will help you. If He likes you so much, surely He will rescue you. My enemies have surrounded me like angry bulls. Their mouths are open wide, like a lion roaring and tearing at its prey. My mouth is as dry as a piece of baked pottery. My tongue is sticking to the roof of my mouth. The dogs are all around me. A pack of evil people has trapped me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can see each one of my bones. My enemies are looking at me. They just keep staring. They divide my clothes among themselves, and they throw lots for what I am wearing. With these words, David painted a vivid picture of the coming king. What have we learned thus far? In earlier lessons, we have learned that, 1. A descendant of Eve will crush Satan's head. 2. A descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will bless all nations. And 3. A true king will come through Judah. In this lesson, we have discovered that the coming king will be a descendant of David and will be called the Son of God. Like David, he will be a shepherd king.